This is day 11 in my six mark challenge for AQA GCSE Science. In the run up to the exams, Monday to Saturday, I'm posting a new video each day with a six mark question so you can practice how to answer them. You'll find a link in the description below to all of this week's questions and also you can access all of the videos in the series so far in the playlist. Today we're looking at organic chemistry and the separation of petrol and naphtha. But before you dive in, just a couple of quick reminders. Firstly, these questions may look like essay questions. You're going to get a whole sheet of A4, but actually they're not. You need to present your ideas in a logical order, but there are no marks in GCC Science for writing in full sentences or paragraphs. If anything, your examiner is actually going to prefer it if you're using bullet points or a numbered list to lay out your points. Also, remember, you need to answer the full question. So here it could be really easy to dive in and explain the overall process. But remember, at the end, you need to be describing how do we separate petrol and naphtha. If you haven't done so already, pause the video now and give yourself six minutes to answer this six mark question. The first thing you've probably said is that this process that separates petrol from naphtha is called fractional distillation. Now, fractional distillation has come up several times in recent years, but sometimes it's been a three mark question or a four mark question or even a six mark question. So there's quite a lot of detail that you can include here. But whatever the length of the question is, you've almost certainly started with the fact that the crude oil needs to be heated. And you may even have specified that it's heated to about 350 or maybe 400 degrees C. When that happens, all of those liquid hydrocarbons are going to evaporate. And you might have referred to those as hydrocarbons or compounds or molecules, and any of those would be fine. So after they've evaporated and turned into vapors, the vapors are going to enter something called a fractionating column. And that column is going to be much hotter at the bottom near to the heat source and cooler at the top, which is what we call a temperature gradient. Although if you've just described it rather than using the term temperature gradient, that's fine too. So as these vapors rise up, they're going to cool down and they're gradually going to condense and turn back into liquids. So the crucial part about separating out two different fractions is that they have different boiling points. And particularly if you're taking higher tier, you might have started to delve into the fact that this is because of the differences in strength between their weak intermolecular forces. So the smaller the molecule, the weaker those forces will be, or the bigger the molecule, the stronger the forces will be. And that's therefore going to mean they have a higher boiling point. So because petrol and naphtha are different sizes and they have different boiling points, they're going to condense in geographically different locations. One's going to be higher and one's going to be lower. So it's going to be the smaller molecules that condense at the top of the column because that's where the temperature is lower. You might have also included something in your answer about some fractions remaining as a liquid at the bottom of the column or even some molecules already being gases before we start the heating process. Now, for this particular question, you wouldn't need to mention those things because we're not talking about bitumen or residue, those really, really big hydrocarbons that we get at the bottom. And you're not talking about the methane gas that is already a gas. But you might have included those in your answer anyway, because we often do talk about them when we're discussing fractional distillation. Now, as we've said before, there's always one six mark question that is a level marked question that is common to the foundation tier and the higher tier. So it's aimed at about grade four, grade five. And this would be one of those questions. So there's some detail we've included here that you wouldn't actually need to put in to get the full six marks because it's not something that we would expect a grade five candidate to necessarily be saying. So what do you need to say? Well, even if fractional distillation comes up as a three mark question, we definitely need to talk about the fact that the crude oil is heated. And then the second thing that we definitely need to include, no matter how few marks are available, is that this causes the compounds or the molecules or the hydrocarbons to evaporate. That's always your number one go to word when you're discussing fractional distillation. And then we can think about the sort of opposite processes about how this is going to cool down and therefore condense. So even as a three mark question, those are the three things that you need to be thinking about. And then the next thing we need to think about is this temperature gradient. And as I said before, it's OK if you haven't used that term. If you've just said it's much hotter at the bottom and cooler at the top, that would cover the same thing. So those are really the points that we're going to need to have covered in order to get into the level two and to get three or four marks. But to get five or six marks, we need to be discussing these specific fractions, petrol and naphtha, and how they are separated. So the key thing here is that they have different boiling points. 
and therefore they're going to condense in different places. And it would be OK if you talked about the different locations or the smaller molecules higher in the column. Either one of those would do it. The bits about the different weak intermolecular forces are true and it's really good if you know them. But actually, we don't need to include them to get the full marks for this question. The last day of this week's science six mark challenge, we're going back to physics paper two and looking at the differences between microwaves and sound waves. Remember, there's a link in the description below to all of the questions for this week's videos, and you can also find the rest of the videos in the series in the playlist. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again tomorrow for the last of this week's six mark challenges. If you found this useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE science revision videos coming soon.